Guys, what did your girlfriend's dad do to establish dominance? My father-in-law held some title for a state boxing champ in his home state back in the day. The first time we drove over to see him, he was drunk and had a huge cut across the bridge of his nose. Apparently, he had messed the crap out of three-something-year-old bullies the night before when they decided to jump him at the bar. His 70-something-year-old dad was mugged in his own home one time. My father-in-law found the guy who did it, followed him inside his house, and messed up his knees and elbows. He then proceeded to uh, teach a lesson to the guy to the point of brain damage. In his words, if they can't talk, they can't identify you. Some clarification, the muggers didn't just break in and take stuff. They waited until my wife's grandpa got home, followed him in, and messed him up. Put him in the hospital for like a week with broken bones and stuff. Not justifying what my father-in-law did, but just clarifying that it wasn't a total overreaction. Dude is chill AF every time I'm around and thanks me every time I see him for getting his daughter out of the hellhole they lived in. But I know for a fact if I ever break her heart, he'd freaking bury me. If I ever leave, it'll have to be the country. I'm safe, my wife is safe, and no, I don't need an intervention. My father-in-law is actually a super cool guy who has never given me trouble for even a second. He will call me up out of the blue and thank me for taking care of his daughter because he knows if she wasn't with me, she'd have probably ended up with one of the a-holes she'd been dating around there. Well, I like that one stands out, huh? If they can't talk, they can't identify you? Good life advice, but dude, scary life advice? Holy crap. Coming from your father-in-law? Oof. Story two. My ex-father-in-law never did anything to really establish dominance. He shook my hand and looked at me and asked how I was doing. About seven months later, when she was my girlfriend, we went and told him and her mother that she was pregnant, but we had already started saving extra money and had a plan for when the baby was born. This was in 2002. He once again shook my hand and thanked me for actually being a real man. Eventually, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and we moved in with them so we could keep a better eye on him. I ended up with not only another father figure like my grandfather, but a best friend too. We did everything together and had a lot of fun. We'd pick on each other so much it would easily get out of hand much to the rolling of eyes of our respective wives. He went missing a couple of times, went for a walk and got turned around and then went for a drive and got lost. I was terrified but kept my composure and didn't stop looking until we found him hours later. He was your stereotypical Texan with a lot of guns, cowboy boots and hats but with a heart the size of Texas itself to match. Fun fact, when his daughter, my wife, ended up cheating on me, which led to separation and divorce, she thought it was okay to bring the new guy around a couple of months after our daughter and I moved back near my family. He excused himself and came back with one of his shotguns and simply proclaimed, you're not nemesis, and the guy actually pissed himself. He told me about it later on the phone, cracking up, and he said I'm not as far gone as they think sometimes, and he told me that I will forever be his son. I miss that Texan mustard so much. Story 3. I'll always remember my first date with one girl in high school. I drove over to pick her up and her dad opened the door. She's still getting ready, but we'll be down in a sec. Why don't you uh, come in and sit down? Her dad and one of his friends were hanging out in the living room, and I'm pretty sure they had been drinking for a bit. I've never met either of them before and didn't even know the girl that well. I was 17. After a basic small talk, he asks abruptly what I'd do if I died and was standing before St. Peter or whoever. I was asked why I should be led into heaven. I stumbled over a bit of, well, I always helped people and lived a good life, while he and his friends shook their heads. I suddenly remember that they were Baptists, but most importantly, I found grace in Jesus Christ, which pleased both of them immensely. Next, her dad asks what I would do if I just got a brand new Mustang, and at the gas station, he came up and asked if he could borrow it for a day. I had no idea where he was going with this, but his next line was, isn't that the same thing if I let you take my daughter out tonight? I was taken aback and was close to arguing that his daughter was sentient and not a car, but thankfully she came down and interrupted with that, oh dad, stop, and we left shortly thereafter. Growing up in the Bible Belt was fun. If that were me, I'd floor it, lose control, and probably end up in a ditch because, hello, Mustang. Story 4. My ex-girlfriend used to know this guy, we'll call him Sam, who just came out. But his dad worked for the military and was overly macho about everything. Anyway, he was absolutely horrible to Sam once he found out. Because I guess he couldn't fathom that such a macho man could have such a feminine son or something. 
Anyway, Sam was at culinary school abroad and was back to visit his dad and partially to also finally come out of the proverbial closet and invited my ex and I to a fancy dinner at his dad's. My ex was going to be late, so I went in alone and was greeted at the door by the guy's dad. He looked me up and down, grabbed my hand real tight and pulled me in real close and looked me in the eyes with absolute rage. He then started to tell me how he worked really hard to be able to do what he's done, but some people were ungrateful. He then started asking me if I've ever fought a man before and if I had the guts to take on a man twice my size. I was so confused and actually felt really intimidated and out of place. Then his dad took me to his man cave, a room full of navy memorabilia and a giant sailfish on the wall with a bar full of expensive whiskey. He then asked if I could drink like a man. I refused because I was driving. And he then said that I wasn't even man enough to be with his sausage muncher of a son, let alone his daughter. It was then that I realized that Sam's little sister just got a new boyfriend and he thought that I was him. Poor Sam. Poor little sister and her future boyfriends. That man was such an a-hole. Story 5. When I was in high school, I dated a girl who lived way out in the woods. She had always driven to my house to hang out or we would meet somewhere. Well, one day we were going somewhere nice and she wanted to dress up. I told her we would make it a formal date and I would pick her up at her house. She warned me of how her dad was kind of wild and he would be home. I told her, "Ah, it'll be all right. I ain't no wuss. Well, the time came and I'm pulling down the driveway and as I get to the house, I see him. Six foot, no shirt, mullet cut, off acid, wash shorts, dip spit all over his face. Chopping wood with an axe, and I can only imagine being a modified Thor hammer. I mean, this man is splitting logs bigger than I am, and I get out of my car, and then he stops. You here to pick up my daughter? Yes, sir. She's going to be down in a minute. She's still getting ready. Here, help me a minute. And he tossed me a smaller but nicer axe. So I helped him chop wood in my nice clothes for about 30 minutes. I was afraid if I said no, he would chop me. We ended up bailing on the nice restaurant, eating McDonald's, and having fun instead. Her dad ended up being one of the nicest guys ever, but damn, that initial meeting was intimidating. He slept in his recliner every night with his shotgun in his lap. Story 6. I'm not with her anymore, but her previous girlfriend I had had quite the father. So I show up to pick her up for our first date, high school, and her dad answers the door. He is a larger man, not much taller than me, but definitely wider and more built. Then again, I'm quite scrawny at this age. Anyways, he shakes my hand and gives me that strong dad grip, then tells me Lady is still getting ready, but that I should join him in his lair. So I follow him downstairs to this lair, and on the way, we pass a gun rack with several shotguns. He stops and points at them and says, You know, I actually keep one loaded, then keeps moving. All right, I think. Stay cool, stay cool. We enter his man cave, and it turns out he has a small boxing ring in there. He tells me that if he used to train boxers back in the day, then he could teach me a thing or two, just in case some punk tries anything. I grab gloves, he grabs those hitting mitts, not sure of the name, and he teaches me how to punch. And as we're doing this, he tells me that he's trained both his girls in defending themselves, and just as I swing for his glove, he dodges and wraps me over the head, sending me to the ground. He leans over and in the best dad voice ever says, And if they can't take you down, I will. I'm on the ground for a few seconds before I get up. He starts laughing just as Lady arrives. It was a bit intimidating at first, but after the date, I drove her back home and the dad invited me in for a jam session. Turns out he plays drums and wanted to test my guitar skills. Apparently, I impressed him and we're still friends to this day, even though his daughter and I don't see each other anymore. Bro, dad just basically introduced himself as Rambo, Rocky, and Dave Grohl. Don't mess with my daughter, am I right? Story 7 finally I can contribute. So he challenged me to an eating contest. And the food, a burger known simply as the double burner. The menu had it listed as a burger topped with ghost pepper sauce, ghost peppers, and habaneros. Those bold enough to take the challenge must consume this burger in 15 minutes or less. No utensils, drinks, or other food can be used during this period. And after finishing your burger, you must wait a further five minutes without food or drink. Win and you will receive a commemorative t-shirt and your photo on the wall. And I'm thinking, all right, I'm a pretty spicy guy. I love me some hot food. He asks if I'm down to try it. He wants a t-shirt. My girlfriend immediately says yes for me. I shrug, figuring, hey, why not? I kind of wanted to try it anyway. So we order the burgers and the waitress returns with two sheets of paper. 
waivers. We had to sign waivers to eat these burgers, promising we wouldn't sue if the burgers harmed us physically or mentally, and that we wouldn't try to charge them our cleaning bills if we crap ourselves or try to drink the nearby lake. And this is where I should have realized a burger was serious business, but nope, hormones and a struggle for dominance overrode my common sense. Now see, eating the burger was the easy part. You sweat a lot, it burns like hellfire, but as long as you don't wipe your eyes or anything, it's really not that bad. We both beat the challenge, sweating like crazy and red in the face, him finishing just a bite before me. Then came the hard part, sitting for five minutes with the inside of your mouth just roasting, your lips burning, sweat streaming down your face. It's terrible. There's nothing left to distract you from the unholy thing you just did to your body. We stuck it out, collected our t-shirts, and had our photos stapled to the wall. It was over. We'd won. Or so we thought. See, it was the double burner for a reason. The monstrosity burned going in and burned going out. Actually, it should have been called the triple burner. It burns your mouth, it burns your bum, it even makes it burn when you piss. I've never bonded with any other human being like that. And I've never bonded with any other human being like I ever did with her dad. Nothing says friendship like, hey, purely medical question here. Does it hurt for you to piss? Jesus, like a kidney stone. Oh, okay, good. Thought I was about to have a new problem. All right, so this one was pretty tame compared to the others, at least just hearing it. So if you're enjoying the video, <coughs> or you can just relate to the scenario of, you know, having to do things to yourself just to impress your girlfriend's or ex-girlfriend's dad, please do consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. Story 8. Oh wow, wish I'd seen this thread earlier. I don't know if this was an alpha move so much as an attempt to call my bluff and see how I rolled with the punches. My father-in-law is a bass player. My girlfriend, now my wife of 23 years, took me to meet him at a bar where his band was playing. It was a decent sized venue. I would estimate the crowd size at around 300 people. He was on stage when we arrived, so we sat down and watched the set. The band took a break between sets and we met. He introduced us both to his new girlfriend, now wife, and turned to me and said, I understand you play bass. Yes, sir, I replied. I'd been playing for almost three years at the time, but my girlfriend hadn't seen me play yet. Well, that's great, he said, because I'd like to dance with my new girlfriend. Would you mind sitting in for me with the band for a few songs? The expression on his face was dead serious. This was a challenge, for sure. For a moment, I was caught off guard, but then I heard myself reply, sure. So he introduced me to his singer guitarist and said to him, see if you can find some songs he knows. Then he walked away to hang out with our girlfriends. The guitarist showed me their set list, and while I had heard of many of the songs, I didn't know how to play any of them. How many of these have something like a 12-bar blues structure, I asked. We identified two songs that sort of fit the build, but there were some changes I'd have to look out for. The only one I can recall the name of was Walking the Dog, but I have no idea whose version they were covering. He told me which keys they were in, and that was it. When they took the stage again, I joined them. The guitarist just looked over at me and said, Watch me for the changes. Then they started playing, and I had to go on instinct to figure out when to come in. Not a perfect performance, but good enough. I doubt most people in the audience even noticed the band personnel had changed. Father-in-law was impressed, and yes, he danced with his new girlfriend. Since then, he calls me big guy, which I guess is a compliment, though I'm not at all a big guy. He seems to really like me to the extent that I sometimes think I can do no wrong by him. I believe it all goes back to that first meeting and my willingness to take that chance and accept his challenge, or call his bluff if that's what it was. Story 9. I had heard nothing but great things about my future father-in-law from his daughters, but I couldn't help but preemptively turn the tables on him. My in-laws lived in the northern part of Germany, so we didn't meet for the first six months of my relationship with his daughter. As I got out of the car in front of the parents' house for the first time, it occurred to me that we've never spoken. They know nothing about me other than I'm American and I lived in Europe a few years back. As her father opens the door, I stick out my hand and say in a Texan-twinged accent, as if I've only read German from a book which translates to, I'm very happy to be making the opportunity to meet ourselves for the first time. My girlfriend looks at me, smiling, but giving me the don't be a butt look with her eyes. Then her father says, he speaks very well. We're glad you're here. Welcome. That genuine kindness took the piss out of me immediately. I couldn't continue the charade and apologized in fluent, nearly accent-free German that had actually lived in Germany for 18 months and spoken mostly German with his daughter since we'd met. He looked at me, relieved, and said, thank goodness I was afraid you actually did speak bad German with that horrible accent. Now I don't have to fake being polite. 
We enjoyed many evenings in the front room talking, me too jet-lagged to sleep, him thankful to have somebody he could discuss European politics with, and simultaneously bash another important American who speaks with a Texan accent. Shocked the hell out of him one and a half years later when I called him on the phone in the morning. Told him I was planning on asking his daughter to marry me and would he be so kind as to give me his permission. We enjoyed many more years together with late night jet lag talks until he suffered an aneurysm walking from the bakery to take roles to his elderly friends who were shut-ins. I miss that man. Story 10. My dad was sneaky and underhanded when he went about it and he actually used me to do the dominance thing. I'm female. I brought my first boyfriend home to meet the parents when I was 16 and my boyfriend was 17. Dad is all polite and smiles, being very friendly. That's just how he usually is. I was wondering when he tried to establish dominance though, so I waited. Some background, one of my favorite hobbies through high school and to this day, was shooting clays with my dad on the weekends. He bought me my first shotgun for my 14th birthday, so by the time my junior year, I have almost three years of practice. Little did I know, I was actually good. I hadn't gone shooting with many people other than my dad, and usually I did all the shooting and he just threw clays for me as he enjoyed watching me pulverize them into dust, so I didn't see him shoot that much either. So I invited my boyfriend to go shooting with us one weekend. He hasn't gone shooting with a pump-action shotgun before, so he asks my dad how everything works. Dad just turns to me and says, I'll go set up the clays, you give him the rundown. And I walk my boyfriend through how everything works, where the safety is, how to aim and use the front sight and rail gun safety, how to properly swing it up to your shoulder, the lingo to use when shooting clays, best way to stand and how to rotate and pivot, etc. His eyes are wide as saucers at this point and we let him go first. He picks it up pretty quick and after a couple boxes of shells, ends up with around a 30% hit rate. Now it's my turn. I shot my first box of shells and didn't miss one. Next box, same deal. To me, this is a decent day, pretty normal at that point. And through the day, I shot 500 plus shells and missed maybe 8. On the way home, Dad is congratulating me on a great day of shooting and starts saying how in a conflict, I'd be so great. Those clays travel much faster than a sprinting man, etc. Boyfriend is now wide-eyed and knows what's going on. We get home, have dinner, and my boyfriend seems to be okay. When he goes to leave, Dad just walks him to the door, shakes his hand, and says, I suggest never doing anything that could bring emotional or physical harm to my daughter. As you can see, she can take care of herself. And then he sent him on his way. My dad is brilliant and awesome. Oh, well, damn. If that was my girlfriend, I wouldn't even need to hear what her dad had to say because I know she can handle things on her own already, right? Story 11. Dated a girl back in high school who took me to her grandparents for a family reunion type of meal. Sometime after the dinner, her grandfather took me outside to talk and we started walking towards his workshop. So he opens the door, and suddenly I am staring down the barrel of a frickin' cannon. Not a model, not a toy, a cannon. A fully functioning Civil War cannon surrounded by all manner of historical weaponry. Muskets, rifles, swords, bayonets, battle axes, even a frickin' suit of armor, you name it, an old boy collected it. Needless to say, I knew right then and there that Gramps didn't mess around, and I probably shouldn't do anything to really piss off his granddaughter. Story 12. A dad cleaned a pistol in front of me. And that said, I thought he already knew that my dad was a cop and that he figured I thought guns were cool, which was true. I truly thought he was just trying to relate to me. In hindsight, I guess not. Alright, so if you like these stories and you could relate to some of the fears some of the guys had in these stories, here's a few more for you. YouTube thinks you're going to love them. I'll catch you in that video, and thank you for spending time with me on this one.